Are these young Asian American creators on TikTok just being way too stereotypical? Let's break it down. Yeah, there's a brand new crop of Asian American creators. However, there is a counter movement right now against them. Let's run the clips. We were characterized to be quiet, shy, nerdy, no personality type of people. Banega Higa was a creator who was extremely down to earth and relatable. His jokes and personality shined a light onto the Asian community. And Ricegum, though he does have a lot more controversy, he still made a strong impact with the roast videos he made, rapping, diss tracks, which again, you wouldn't traditionally see in Asian representation. But let's fast forward a couple years after we ate some bats and TikTok becomes a big platform. More and more Asian creators started to pop up left and right. And this is a big moment for us, you know? We always lacked in the department of the entertainment industry. And now this is our chance to show the world how we're like. Am I speaking Japanese now? Oh, yeah. Oh, never mind. I'm happy that Asians have become more mainstream and all, but as all good things must come to an end, I feel like this pot we had is starting to overbrew. I swear to God, bro, all the years we've taken to build ourselves up here, we're getting sent back at least 50 years with the new wave of Asian creators. Hey guys, uh, what is with all these Asian creators going out and making like stereotype videos? Huh? <gasps> what? You got Eric O and then that one guy is fucking milking that trend. You know, where they, they go in the car, it's like, oh, you want to date 70, you, you're on a date with your 73rd, like, ABB or ABG. And then, like, you know, you're like, oh, what's your favorite artist? Like, Millennium, uh, Gavin, Slander, like. Boom, yo, listen, this whole Reddit, uh, this whole video was sparked by a Reddit post saying, anybody else cringed by the Asian American TikTok scene? He said, this guy did say, shout us out. Uh, I was a big fan of guys like Fung Bros and Wong Fu on YouTube. However, I feel like a lot of Asian American TikTok trends are getting played out, especially the typical Kevin Wynn, ABG, Keshi, ABB rave stuff. All right, let's just play one of the kind of the ABG memes that's going viral real quick. So who do you listen to? Millennium, Keshi, Davin, Blast, Noctu, and Leo. Oh my gosh! So, what do you like to do? I like raving, shimming, modding my car, and playing Valorant. You're like everybody else! So, where do you like to go? Seaside, Top of the World, Signal Hill, and Irvine Spectrum. Fuck! <gasps> So what raves have you been to? I've been to Escape, Countdown, yeah, Beyond, Lost, Lost in Dreams. Oh my god. <laughs> Listen, man, there is a number of YouTube videos that just came out recently. Uh, basically, guys, I don't know, some people say they're hating on this new crop of guys. Some people saying they're just, you know, critically analyzing the content of people who got specifically called out, Andrew, Eric O and Jason the Weenie. Right, and I think there's a lot of other names out there. A lot of people have made a viral TikTok, but basically, to sum up, what the complaints are about these Asian American TikTokers is that they're going viral, but they're all from SoCal, and they're not advancing the image of Asians in the way that they think they are. They are simply putting Asians into these ABG, ABB, Kevin Wynn, EDM, Boba, rave boxes that Asians are much bigger than, and it's cringy to them. Now, we're going to analyze, because we have a perspective, I think, being kind of these old school OG YouTube creators, where we did our own kind of stereotype videos a long, long time ago, David. And even some people, like this Twitter person, they're trying to compare what the TikTokers are doing now to what we were doing back then, which I think are a little bit different, but I see the similarities. But either way, we're gonna analyze this and go through it. Right, so make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smala Sauce on Amazon.com. I'll say this real quick. I agree partially with these people that are like hating on the young Asian uh, TikTok creators, but I actually think that essentially it's more of a reflection of where the Asian American community is at. And if so many young streamers are going to make so much money making like quote unquote frivolous content, Andrew, Kai Sinat and I Show Speed are getting more money than a platinum selling rapper right now for all, by all means, why shouldn't these super young Asian creators go get their bread? Right. I think the overall issue is that this type of content gets the views, gets the attention in this at attention economy and your eyeballs are worth something. And maybe it makes these like TikTokers lives better because, you know, this, the memes get shared amongst their friends and ABGs and girls. You know, a lot of them are guy creators. Are you, are you talking about be like amongst the AZN world? Yeah. But I think the complaint is that a lot of these guys complaining about this scene are saying that it's kind of talentless. It's very easy. It's kind of regurgitating stereotypes. And it's like, 
How many Kevin Wim memes do we have to see? How many Seaside right. Donut ABG SoCal memes do we have to see? Right, right, right. I think uh, there was a lot of complaints saying that like the most 10% stereotypical 10 out of 10 ABB, ABG uh, SoCal Asians get to define the entire Asian American narrative. Whereas right. there's a lot of other types of Asians, but they have no gravity or they have no good creators drawing magnetism or eyeballs. And you're saying that this is this content, these viral TikToks are just meeting Asians where they're at. It's not right. supposed to advance them. It's not supposed to be ultra self-aware and conscious and hyper like, you know, uh, intellectual. It's just meeting people where they're at to get the clicks. Like if they, these people, and I'm assuming they, they didn't say this in this video because I noticed that they didn't compare it to other communities. If you're looking for an Issa Rae, if you're looking for a Childish Gambino, if you're looking for a Tyler, the creator, these like whatever you call them, new black creators, you're not going to find them in the community because our entire story is so different from other communities. Do you know what I'm right. saying? Like, if you look at the black entertainment world, it's like so fleshed out. You've got country people like Tyler Perry, city people like Spike Lee, and then like the newer generations mm. of those people. Like our world is like super, super in its infancy. And I guess like, do you think people are mad at that infancy? Because that infancy is what allows there to be such an imbalance between who's drawing the magnetism and like people thinking like where the community should be at. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's yeah. not a crazy mixture between the revolutionaries, the intellectuals, and the creators and entertainers in our world. They're all, like, separate silos in the Asian yeah, world because, yeah. like, our story is not that developed in this country. I do agree that it seems like in the past 10 years, which 10 years seems like a long time, but actually when it comes to culture and how people feel and, like, content, and actually 10 years, the artists from 10 years ago are still popular today. So it, it, it's it's just, we're in this, like, 50, it's really 15 years, you know? And the past 15 years, maybe the conversation about ourselves, about Asians, talking about Asians in a in a in an artistic way has not advanced that much. But anyways, we're going to analyze real quickly all these TikTokers and these new school people because we've I've kind of seen their videos. We've, we've all watched a little bit of them. So... Let's just go through them real quick. All right, real quick. We got to start off with my favorite. At least in my opinion, this is the most compelling content. Ray being part of Kai Sinat's crew. Okay, Taiwanese kid, Taiwanese fob. A hooper. Red. A hooper in Taiwan. Right. Like a high-level high school hooper. Right. And uh, he, I don't know the story, but he becomes Kai Sinat's friend. And he is totally, it's a total rush hour dynamic. Like fish out of water. Taiwanese immigrant kid, skinny kid, along in a world of of like black really, kids with people in the from, hood. The B, from from the BX, yeah, from the Bronx with Kai Sinat, and it's just hilarious. And people are vibing with them for whatever reason. And then Kai, uh, Ray had to go back to Taiwan to do military service. Obviously, right. he's mandatory military so, service. So now that puts a a a pause in the story. But it is it is hilarious content i will say this that. is the one that i think like was reaching outside of the asian because it wasn't really in the asian world ray was asian but this was more part of what like the mainstream urban world right right it's not that ray is part of what we consider the asian american scene ray is just from asia and now Kai Sinat's friend. It's like Jackie Chan hanging out with Chris Tucker. Yeah. Uh, moving on, Andrew, we've got Eric O. So this is somebody that one of the YouTubers that was making a cringe video was against. I actually think his content has some, like, a lot of intellectual elements to it. I think he seems like an intellectual guy, but he's purposefully only putting all his energy into, like, college or ABG videos, probably just to, to live a cooler life. Yeah, listen, uh, he's got a low voice. He, you know, he, he's a good looking kid and I know that he is intelligent and he's made some intelligent videos, but I would say he leans into the ABG meme stuff, uh, possibly for attention from women. I mean, let's be honest, which is not wrong. That, that's a lot of people on the internet. Right. And, and I think it's interesting because he made a best looking NBA players video. They got posted in NBA circles where people are just really big NBA fans. Right. Um, moving on, Andrew, we've got Edward So. Edward So, I did see his unemployed friends at LA Fitness Sketch. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. I would say Edward is essentially like, kind of like a Kevin Hart, Marlon Wayne's Korean version, where he's kind of this hype kid. He does make funny, he has a lot of charisma. He does kind of make funny skits, but I wouldn't say it's hyper like intelligent or intellectual or like super well written, but it is funny. Like he got the funny energy. Right, and it feels easy. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel like 
that try hard yeah. despite how hype no, he is, feels, which is very difficult. When you hype, usually it's like try hard. It feels like he's being himself right. with his friends. Next up, we got Jason the Weenie. Um, Jason the Weenie is Vietnamese from Texas. Andrew, also like Edward, also hooped just like Rice Gum. A lot of these guys are hoopers, to be honest. There's just something about hooping. There. Hey, man, it's about basketball. Man. Yeah, basketball yeah. has something to do with it. Um, but yeah, I would say he kind of acts like Jack Harlow. Yeah. But like he's in the streamer world. And I guess someone told me he's making 300K a month right now. Dude, Jason the Weenie is making money. I can tell you that, man. If you're getting those types of views on YouTube and Twitch, um, I would say from his the what I've seen, uh, he does know he's Asian. Like, he knows he's Viet. He plays up his Viet side using the Viet language, sometimes, like, teaching his friends how to hit on Viet girls in Viet, which I thought was funny, but I don't think he's going to discuss his culture. Just like Ricegum never denied he was Vietnamese, but... Uh, they never really like discuss. They don't talk about it because talking about your culture or talking about your culture's history is more on the nerdy side of things. But just being who you are is cool. And right? also being in the mainstream stream world, like Rice Gum with Jake Paul and Logan Paul and them, and then uh, Jason the Weenie with whoever he's with. I don't even know that generation of like non Asian streamers at all. Like they're not trying to hear that. Like they know what's like cool within the fishbowl they're operating within um moving on andrew we've got a little bit of an older millennial zone andrew under the influence podcast yeah no i mean these guys are smart uh, a lot of them are business owners themselves so i think that they're kind of like the more grown intellectual version but they kind of do talk about silly topics or just dating and no they are party guys yeah they are party guys and they have that tone and it is very socal that's what i'll say it's very very socal yeah because you guys have to understand like in southern california when you grow up there and you're asian you don't really have to fully fit in with white or black people which is a very common american experience right. it's mostly asians and latinos two recently arrived immigrant groups sort of coming up with their own rules to some extent um 949 podcast. Yeah. That's a, a podcast out of OC. I want to say they're like middle class, maybe upper middle class Korean kids having fun. Uh, we know some of them. Yeah. Uh, in depth, you know, they talk about stuff in depth enough, but not too in depth. Um, you know, they're self-aware enough to make it fun as a group. And yeah, it's, I mean, obviously they, they garner an audience. I guess, David, to wrap this up, the analysis is it, it's kind of like asking the question, should fun party charismatic SoCal Asians be making content only about these SoCal stereotypes. You mean the SoCal stereotypes? Because if you guys know about SoCal, there's not a lot of like, I wouldn't say necessarily like brain money, tech money there. It's more like business money. Yeah, they're and, not. And that, that, that's what creates like party families because usually business people party a lot yeah. more than like, like, like somebody with like three PhDs like Jensen Huang. Basically, SoCal Asians portray and talk about how fun their lives are. And which means if you talk about partying a lot, you're gonna talk about basic ideas like what are the archetypes of party girls? Or like, oh, what type of Asian dates this? Or what type of Asian guy would you not date? Or would you date? What is your type, you know? Right, right, right. Like uh, dick size or something like yeah, that, right? Yeah, like, like, And uh, by the way, I do think Edward So is from Virginia and Jason the Weenie is originally from Texas, but they may have relocated. I'm not mm. sure. So, I mean, here's my thing, man. I think... Right before we get into the comment section, I think that these guys that made viral videos complaining about the current generation of the last four years of Asian TikTok creator is more mad at the lack of holisticness in the Asian world rather than these guys getting a bunch of money making silly content. Right. Like, it's more like there's no serious Asians making serious hard-hitting content getting bread only the silly guys are right. getting money. It's Whereas like, like in the black world, you could argue that Kai Sinat and I Show Speed are getting money, but then there's also serious guys like donald glover or whatever getting money well is it kind of like saying well guys based on these asian tiktokers it looks like we're not gonna have our donald glover or kendrick lamar anytime soon right serious guys who get a lot of respect and money yes yeah yeah it seems like that anyway let's just get into the comment section i wouldn't single asians out most tiktok content is cringe in real life the reason they go viral is because they incite a reaction negative or positive basically tiktok content's not designed to be good but just elicit an emotional reaction from the viewer right right it's just meant to get shared i think that's why to be honest, analyzing TikTok content to an extent, it's a little bit pointless because it's short form content that's just meant to get views. Like if you if the, if you make a 20 second meme video on TikTok about ABGs and Kevin wins, that's quite different than what I would expect in a 20 minute long YouTube 
expose on Kevin Wynn and ABGs. Right. And uh, I don't even know if that would even get that many views. It might, but it's it's almost a, a, like a topic you can't really fully analyze right, right, realistically. Right. Like seriously, you well, can't. I mean, literally, we've analyzed it in like fifteen minute videos. So if you want to search for it on our channel, we've definitely talked about it for that long. This other guy said, "How can you say that these people are setting Asians back generations? We saw so much war, death, and imperialism from the previous generations just to be blessed enough to be in Southern California, go to UCs, and go to EDC. Like this is like an amazing time." Somebody, Yo, was, <laughs> that that's a real that's comment, a bro. I don't know, like especially and. You know, because the Kevin Wynn and ABG memes, they essentially come from more so, if you made me say, Vietnamese Americans, right? That's the Viet's, Viet's are the kind of like the father of that. They're the nexus. Yeah, they're the they're the father and the mother of the ABG and Kevin Wynn memes. You Although mean the everybody, Jennifer, the Jennifer Tran, yeah, Kevin I mean, Wynn. I mean, that's why they call him Kevin Wynn, duh, right? Uh, but, and so I feel like I do feel this comment where it's like, guys, Listen, these are Asians feeling comfortable with them, themselves. They're cool. They're living good lives. Yes, yep. some of it is stupid content. I 100% agree. Right. But it's not hurting anybody. You know the type of content I hate, and I've said it on the channel, prankster com, uh, content where you're messing with real people or messing up property. I hate that destructive type of content. This is not that destructive. On the, it's, it's just not that bad. Right, right, right. Um, I think, like I said, it's more about the lack of monetization of more intelligent content than the monetization of more shallow, like basically right. party-based content. Uh, this next series of comments said, I prefer it over the I got raw rice and make straight A's cringe stuff that I heard growing up. And somebody said, but it's still the same. You see Uncle Roger getting a lot of views based off that, you know, like rice and essentially like you need to get straight A's. And then this Blasian person came in. So they're half black and half Asian and said, to be honest, being nerdy, only drinking boba, liking raves from my perspective, that is where the Asian community is still at. So how can you be mad that people make content about it? Yeah. I think people are just mad that a lot of Asian Americans like those things. And we've been talking about it on our channel for years. That's what Asian Americans like. They like EDM. A lot of them, not all. Like, I'm not one of these typical Asians, although I like some of that stuff, but I'm really not into it. So it's like, of course, not all Asians are into it. But yes, the, of this generation of SoCal, you can bet they've all been to a rave. They all have had boba. They all have a Kevin Wynn or ABG friend, or they've dated one. All, you know what I mean? They all like Keshi, right? Yeah, all like Keshi on some level. So I guess if these, like, isn't it just like saying, like, I, you know, it's hard to always compare it to other communities, but it's like, like black people in the nineties. Like if you were in New York, it was like, Oh, you're black. You like rap. Like, are you going to summer jam? Right. In the early two thousands, like, right. Oh, you, you just keep it up with the Jay-Z and Nas beef. How come all black people are keeping up with the Jay-Z and Nas beef? Right. But it's like, that's just where a lot of the or, community Or you're saying at. like all Latinos going to reggaeton yeah. or something or all white people what watching baseball and yeah. hockey and um How come all the Latinos being, are being in the stocks and How stuff? come all the Latinos are listening to Bad Bunny? Like why? Oh, how, is that all the same? That's so cliché, right? I guess is that saying the same thing? You know, it's just a funny time in 2024 when it comes to like racial stereotypes because I see a lot of people like leaning into them too. Like you said for for views, but it also is like it, if it wasn't kind of true, why would they lean into it so yeah, much, right? I, I do think there's an- <laughs> Seriously. No, there's an empowerment aspect for sure. There's an empowerment aspect to all of this where it's like, we own up to it. We are Kevin Wins. We do like EDM. I'm not going to apologize. For, yes, I vape. Yes, I like ABGs at this point in my life. I'm not apologizing it's for that. It's almost like Lil Mabu making those like drill songs about having a rich dad or like, yeah. I don't know. I see a lot of other comedians, yeah. like comedians from other yeah, yeah. worlds, like owning their own stereotypes about having this or that. Um, somebody said, to be honest, the old YouTube generation, like Fung Bros, JK Films, My Chani were pretty cringe too. No. Oh. Yeah. All right, I'll tell you this. We made some pretty... Everybody did cringe stuff to get views because, like, those are the times. That's the era. That's the, the tone and the winds and the sands of time. I will say this, though. every It feels like a lot of content in, in uh, the Asian YouTube space, in the rap world, got dumbed down. Because if you look at, like, even how lyrical rap was, it's way dumber in 2024 than in 2014 and dumber in 2014 than it was in 2004. So exactly. I'm saying that that's... It seems like the world, to me, as the world's getting smarter, or maybe AI is getting smarter at least, 
it seems like a lot of stuff that people want to consume is more just like enjoyment for the brain rather than stimulating the brain. Mm. That's what I noticed, man. I, you can argue comedy got dumber too. I don't know. Interesting. Um, somebody said, I like Fung Bros, but they're pretty cringe overall. Their views on a lot of things that are shallow and lack analysis. Man, we're just spending 20 minutes analyzing this. Give us a break. Anyways, continue. What's the next comment? Right, right. Somebody said, Asian American content is just like anything else. There's cringy stuff, trendy stuff, trendy stuff that's played out, actually insightful educational stuff, original and innovative stuff. It's just that you only care about the stupid stuff and now you're getting mad at it because you don't relate to the smart stuff. Mm. So this person's blaming the guys making the videos. Like basically they are tapped they're like, are they mad that that's what everybody else is watching? Or are they mad that that's what they're watching? Right. Because there is some still educational stuff available. Mm. I guess I'll tell you this, man. It's tough because everything became a little bit more like high school where it's like, you know how usually the cool kids in high school are a little bit vapid and they are like more about their own, like good looking dating lives and stuff like that. Like the cool kids in school, unless you go to a hyper educational high school are never the smart kids. Right. So is, I guess are all the people that are criticizing Eric O and Jason the Wiener or whatever, whatever, just like criticizing the cool party kids at school when they're like in the honors class, like trying to build science projects? Right. I mean, I feel like I, like these guys making these YouTube videos criticizing, like I feel what they're saying because I feel like we analyze stuff on the same level too and I can see where they're coming from, but I guess maybe I feel differently about it. I don't think it's necessarily like destroying the Asian community. I think that the Asian community is big enough. And just because these TikToks are getting views, it doesn't mean it's the narrative, but maybe it's the narrative of SoCal Asians that are living a good life. Like if you want to be social and get baddies, then yeah, I don't know. No, maybe those are, those, the SoCal Asian is the most 10 out of 10 example. If you're a good looking like party kid, SoCal Asian was from a family that has some money and some networks, like wherever you're born. It is the most like, I guess, atypical Asian life because it's not like the tiger mom. You're like studying somewhere. Your parents are like professors in the Midwest or Northeast and you're like locked away, like trying to become a model minority. You know what I mean? It's almost like the reverse of that, mm. you know? So it's true. It's true. I mean, and I guess, like we said, I mean, we uh, did an interview with uh, Wamey. Wamey is a girl who's like, does a, like a Gen Z style channel for the other type of Asian kid that's not like the SoCal Asian party kid. So it really depends, man. It really, like, I don't think you can be mad at the creators for what gets magnetism because from all accounts, like those guys really live those lives and are from those family backgrounds. So kudos to them for getting money off of it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just say this, man. I just think the Asian community, Asian American community still in 2024, even with the Oscar wins, even with the Asian YouTube boom of 2010 and wherever we're at now with TikTok, it's still that, the community that sociality wise, like not income and career wise is the most in flux. Mm. And I think that people are just mad at the topsy turvy roller coaster ride of a community that really hasn't figured out what they want to be yet. Mm. Would you agree with that? Like we are just still so developing that it's almost like, that's why all this ish seems so wacky. And like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, why does Jason the weenie make 300 K, but there's a lot of even Asian actors they don't make 300K a month. You know what I mean? That, that's like 3.6 million a year. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people are like, oh, but there's other people doing this and this and this. But it's like, it's just that we can't really, there, there's less people monetizing high-end Asian American art than low-end Asian American entertainment. Well, I think you could say that about all entertainment right now is that the low-end, because it's easiest to consume and it's the quickest to consume probably makes the most money it profits the most because even if you make a asian american movie there's still a bunch of costs that went into that you're talking about like dd right which it. is high art right yeah yeah um but i i just think you know even though i'm not exactly like these socal kids it is nice to see asians enjoying their life and it's good and it's nice to see asians enjoying each other you know and there was a lot there's a lot less uh it seems like just Asians like each other in SoCal. I don't know. There's right. something to that. Even if they're kind of like existing outside of like being aware of like what it means to be a minority, a seven or five yeah, or seven they're minority. not discussing Asian American identity and trauma and like self-hate and all this. They're not even discussing it. It doesn't exist to them. Right. It's almost like they're in Hawaii or Singapore or something like that. I mean, 
Ultimately, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. I think, if anything, it'd be just more like, I, I wish that the more um, in-depth art just got you know, more rewarded, I guess, like that. It's not really anything against these guys. I say keep going, man. Ride it out. Yeah. All right, everybody. Let us know in the comments down below uh, what you think about these TikTokers. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.